gravitational force is a simple fact of life. It makes apples fall to the ground. Yet, it took several centuries to figure out most of its properties. Gravity always attracts things, and always in the same way. A feather and a stone fall in the same way, at least on the moon, where there is no air to blow the feather away, so say the astronauts. Another feature of gravity is that it can reach infinitely far away. It keeps together apple and earth, and also moon and earth, the solar system, galaxies, and the entire universe. Finally, thanks to Einstein's theory of gravity, all this complexity can be described in terms of a single number. A success, or not. Scientists have known for a long time that the universe is expanding, but in 1998, they discovered that the expansion speed is getting faster and faster. It's accelerating, as if an enormous force were pulling it apart. Scientists think this is due to a modification of Einstein's theory by a new number, the cosmological constant. It corresponds to the density of a strange type of substance, a fluid that permeates the universe. This substance behaves a bit like a gas, in the sense that it has a density and a pressure. But differently from a gas, for the cosmological constant, the pressure is as large as its density, and it is negative. But the strange things do not end here. This fluid does not dilute away during the expansion of the universe, in a sense that, although the universe becomes bigger, its density remains always the same. But what kind of fluid can have negative pressure? and so close in value to its density? This question keeps cosmologists up at night. Particle physics might have an answer. Particles are governed by quantum mechanics and by special relativity. Quantum mechanics says that empty space is not so empty. It's full of vacuum energy. This seems crazy, but it has been measured experimentally by studying cavities of different sizes and shapes. Vacuum energy can be measured as a force on the cavity walls, the Casimir effect. Something similar happens for the entire universe. It is full of vacuum energy. Then, special relativity demands that its pressure equals its density. So vacuum energy is like the cosmological constant. It seems to work. But particle physicists are used to explaining things in terms of some smaller particles, like explaining a gas in terms of its molecules. For the cosmological constant, however, all the possible compositions that we can think of predict values much, 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 much larger than its observed value. The most optimistic scenarios predict something 10 to the 60 times bigger. That is a 10 with 60 zeros. This is like calculating how many bricks you need to build a house and ordering enough to fill the entire universe. An unforgivable mistake. So now also the particle physicists stay up at night. There is no clear solution to this problem and different scientists have different perspectives. Some have realized that if the cosmological constant were very different, there would be no galaxies and nobody to ask himself why has the cosmological constant the value it has? So perhaps there is a multitude of universes with many different values for the cosmological constant, and we happen to be in the one where life and scientists are allowed. This would necessarily have a cosmological constant close to the one we see. Other physicists reject instead the explanation of the cosmological constant in terms of vacuum energy and posit that vacuum energy is actually zero, with the acceleration of the universe driven by another weird type of fluid, dark energy. The quest for explaining the origin of the cosmological constant and the acceleration of the universe is still wildly open. And we do not have infinite time to answer it, now that we know the universe is accelerating its expansion.